Hey everyone, it's Kunda here. I wish I was making this video at a time where I wasn't simultaneously trying to make my lunch supper for night shift kind of thing, but this is where we're at. So I've been wanting to make this video for a little while. I've got a little bit of a kick in the ass recently and I need to get it done soon. So. So what am I here to talk to y'all about? Well, if you've been watching my stuff for a year or any more than that, you might remember that I've got a... I was subjected to a speed trap, and being the libertarian that I am, there was a lot about it that seemed pretty wrong to me, and as I went through the process, there was just more and more of that. So I want to summarize that stuff really quick, because that... Recapping that isn't the point of this video. The point of this video is I want to hear your thoughts on what my options are on how to deal with this. A few of the problems that I had with the actual setup and event where I was ticketed were my understanding is what he, the setup of what he was doing would be classified as a type of entrapment or along the lines of using the features of the road and the signage to manufacture tickets where people aren't speeding for the sake of speeding or aren't intending to be speeding at all. It's basically just taking advantage of the road to make money for the government. And when you're sitting at the bottom of a hill, ticketing up the hill from an 80 zone where it goes from being a 50 kilometer an hour zone to an 80 kilometer an hour zone, it feels like you're not intending to stop people who are speeding through 50 60 kilometer residential areas it feels like you're trying to ticket people who might have jumped the gun a couple seconds early going from their 50 kilometer zone to an 80 kilometer zone or didn't want to be grinding on their brakes to be doing 50 down a hill when they're just going to be speeding up to 80 immediately at the bottom and to be clear i'm not saying that's what i was doing there was a line of five, six cars, and I'm not even sure I was the one that was measured. So, I was paying attention to what my speed was. I was 50, and I was going with the rate of traffic. So, the entire process seemed crooked to me, and there's a couple more things about it that I want to talk to you about before I go into how I want to address this ticket now that it's years in default. All that is to say... It feels like if you go through a court process, if they're convicting you of a crime, it should be pretty evident that you were guilty of doing that. Whereas with all the shit that went wrong in this process, it feels more like the government was collaborating with the agents of the government, like with their representatives in their own system to get a conviction. You know what I mean? They're all paid for by the same colonial power, even if it seems like we're disconnected now because of old Trudeau. After the initial ticketing, there were about four court dates, maybe even five. I think it was four, but some of them were put off because the paperwork was wrong on account of the officer. Some of them were put off because the officer didn't include his certificates and the calibration certificates for the devices. Some of them were just because after sitting through the entire day of court, the judge was like, I'm sorry for making you sit through the whole day of court. I should have realized much earlier that I wouldn't have got to your case, but you're going to have to come back another day. So the first disclosure I got had said in separate places that he had used a radar device and in other places it said a lidar device and after looking up the device that like he identified the device in the disclosure and i looked it up and it was a radar device so i researched that for i did some looking up digging and that kind of thing come to the court date he actually said that it was a LiDAR device that he used, and he had marked in the wrong device, so the judge just told him to, or told the Crown, whichever, whichever, to send me a disclosure that had the accurate information and to come back. So, we had to come back after he sent me disclosure with the actual LiDAR 
device that was on it. And after contacting the manufacturer, I found out that the LiDAR device can take a picture of every time it does a speed measurement. It seems like it takes additional software to do so, and there might be a fee associated with that, and it doesn't seem like the government here paid that fee because they couldn't provide any picture of my vehicle being the one that they measured, but apparently they can do that with this device, but the court didn't want to hear that. What I'm trying to say with all of that is that there were a lot of little things that were wrong with the paperwork, the process. It just feels completely unjust. So, where am I at now? Well, there's this section of the Motor Vehicle Act. It's 299B. And according to that, you can pay certain Motor Vehicle Act infractions in jail time as opposed to paying fines. And... Paying this fine really, to me, just feels like paying for my own robbery. It feels like I would be paying for the robbery of other Scotian people, and it feels like I would be contributing to the problem of... I don't mean to get off into too many of my own thoughts. My point being, if you felt like you got robbed, or were subjected to laws that you felt were unjust, or being utilized in an unjust way, and the process seemed to be incredibly corrupt, would you feel like the moral thing to do would be to, just to fork out the money and hand it over? Or would you rather take a, another approach that costs them more money, hopefully? I'm not considering that course of action because I want to go to jail. Like, I really fucking don't want to do that. But at the same time, it feels like the more, most moral way to go about dealing with things. Even though that I know, as far as ease and convenience go, the simplest way to make this entire problem go away would just be to make a deal to pay the $195 of the fine. Like, it's not a huge fine either, that's the problem. It's... What I'm looking at as far as that goes is either Four days in jail, $50 per day on the fine, or paying $195. Another thing about that that feels shitty is that while I was in court for the last time, I made that clear to the judge that that was the way that I wanted things to go. And the judge basically looked at me like I had three heads and was like, I want you to really think about that before you go through with that. Like, I want you to take the time, go away, and whatever, whatever. And that would have been more or less cool of her if she had told me that in order to come back and talk to me about it, you might have to pay a $60 court fee. And I'm not sure I might not have to pay that if the Crown makes the application for me. I have to look into that, too. So I'll look into that, but... I'm still considering going that way. I'm just not sure if I should go that way or if I should go one of two other ways. So what are those two other ways? Let me tell you. Well, the second of the three ways to go about dealing with it is to just go and pay the fine and forget about it. And for some people, that would have been what they did first thing without a thought. But for me, like, I remember paying a seatbelt fine a few years back now probably a few years before this even started now, actually. But I, I got a seatbelt fine for not wearing a seatbelt. I went and paid it, and I felt like shit afterwards because I was given this impressive government money for something, for a crime, where there's no real victim aside from maybe myself if I got in an accident and got fucked over because my own dumbass decided not to wear a seatbelt. I could just pay the fine or make a payment plan to pay the fine. That's option two. Option three is this fine's already in default. It's been in default for a while and it seems like if I just do nothing or let the government know my intention is to do nothing that they'll just take the money off of tax refunds that normally you get like the GST refund, the HST refund income tax, whatever, they just take that much of the money off of 
whatever they would give back or that might be another option i don't know like my credit's probably already screwed over from this a little bit as it is but i'm not sure if doing that way of things would make it any worse than things already are now so i'm not sure if i should pay the fine let them steal the money from me through their own methods or really put in the work to beg to be thrown in jail for four days so I don't have to pay this $195. So I'm curious to what all of you think I should do in this situation. What's the most just thing? What makes the most sense like on a personal level? Like just let me know what you think. I've got to deal with this really soon and yeah. Outside perspectives would probably be pretty good to have right now.